Coming up today on That LTD Life, I'm gonna be exploring Notch. This is a new lifetime deal on AppSumo that could be best summarized as what would happen if Google Docs, Notion, and DocuSign were all smashed together into one app, you'd end up with something pretty close to Notch. I've already been playing around with it quite a bit, and once I got over a few little hurdles, it made a ton of sense to me, and I like the tool a lot. Now, this is the AppSumo deal page. I've got a link to this in the description. This video is not sponsored, by the way, so if you want to help support the channel, you can go ahead and click on that. I'm going to be exploring this deal page at the end of the video after we already check out the tool. So let's just head right over to the tool and we'll go through everything there. Uh, one other quick thing to mention is that just like last week, they are putting this tool on sale for one week and then the price will go up after seven days. The new tools are here. It's Monday. They released, I think, six or seven new deals and they are all on sale just like last week. So we've got seven days to make up our mind. One other quick thing to mention is that Notch is currently available for plus members only. That is until 930 and then it will be available to everybody. So if you're not already an AppSumo Plus member, I highly recommend getting signed up for it. It does save you 10% on every single thing you purchase. You get early access to cool tools like Notch and you also get the buyer protection policy extended from six months all the way up to 12 months. If you don't know what I'm talking about there, AppSumo will give you 100% of your credits back if you buy an AppSumo Select deal and you are an AppSumo Plus member and your deal goes away, the company fails within the first year. You'll get all of your money back in terms of credits on AppSumo. So really, it's kind of like a little insurance policy as well. Highly recommend Plus if you're an AppSumo addict. All right. Heading over to Notch, let's go ahead and check out this tool. So the trickiest thing about any tool like this is figuring out how they like to do things. What's the order of operations? So let me make that very simple for you. Everything inside of Notch is organized into a list. A list can either be private, so just for you, or it can be shared amongst your team. Now, currently, I only have one list. It's right here and it's private. If I wanted to make this private list public, I could simply click on the three dots Go to access settings and then toggle this switch right here that says list is visible to team and it says you're moving it to shared. Great. So even though it's called private list, I've just moved it over to the shared list and now I'm going to move it back into private. Toggle it off. There we go. So that is our main holder, a folder, I suppose you could say to use computer terms. Uh, that is our main container for our documents. Now, inside of these lists, we have something they call spaces. The spaces are more like hubs or home pages, so to speak. There's not a lot of content that's going to be on the space, the main space, but it does contain the links to all of the individual documents that are included inside of that space. So let me show you what that means. I've got a space here. I called it Dave space. Let's open it up. Now, within a space, we've got a banner here at the top. I've currently set it to just be a color, but you can edit the banner and change it to be a different color or even upload your own image. I've got a stock photo of a sunset here. I've just uploaded it. It's currently processing and there we go. We've got our banner uploaded. Now, one thing that I don't love is the fact that they don't give us some specific resolution for our images. We kind of have to guess. They're just, as it mentions here, it's going to be something wide with a focus on the center. So, you know, that would be helpful if they just told us exactly what the resolution should be, but they don't. So here we go. I mean, I was able to upload this kind of massive. I just downloaded a stock photo. Here's the entire photo. You can see it's almost square here and it's really just getting kind of, you know, the middle of that photo. Now, there is an additional option here that they call brand fetch. So it says enable client branding via brand fetch. This must be a different company. But if I toggle this on, I can enter the client's website. So in this case, I'll choose daveswift.com, my own website. And then it's able to find my website and then pull in a relevant graphic from it. So let's try a different website here. I'm just going to try AppSumo and you can see we've got AppSumo.com. I'll choose that. And then it pulls in this image. It looks like maybe they're getting them from social media. But uh, yeah, overall, it's, it's a cool little touch. Now, one other thing we can do if we're using this kind of like as a proposal or even a client portal is add in our client's logo as well as our own logo. To do this, click on the triple dots up here, and then you can see we've got show client's logo and show your team's logo. I can turn on the client's logo. It grabbed the AppSumo one. I did not upload that. Of course, I could replace it with a different logo if I wanted to, but I can also show my logo. So very easy. And this I did upload, so I'll show you how to do that. 
But overall, very easy to get this looking on brand. Probably one of the better portal experiences in terms of just up and running that I've seen. Now I mentioned I uploaded my own logo. I'll show you that a little bit later on, but I wanna stay focused here. Remember, we created a list. Inside of our list is our space. And then the space can be branded to whatever you like. You can upload your own banner image or use their brand fetch feature. And then from there is where the fun really begins. So down below here, I have pages. So I called the first page my page very creatively. And then page two, I created called page two. And here I embedded a video. You saw on page one, I had an image and a headline here. If I want to make another page, I'll just click here where it says new page. I'll call this one page three, although I could load up a template from this or even save the page itself as a template. So that's very important. I'm more just trying to get through the organizational process here. All right, so I've got my third page. I can go ahead and start using the editor. Maybe I'll add it in a bulleted list. These are all slash commands, by the way, so I can just type a slash and I can see all of their cards that are available. Maybe I wanna have an offer. Gives me a little template to start from. All right, then I continue editing my document as I see fit. Now, what would this look like for the client? Well, there is a preview button up here. If I click on the preview button, this is exactly what the client will see, obviously without this banner at the top and without my login information. So we've got our two logos here. This doesn't look super great. I might want to change the banner a little bit, but then our space is essentially just, you know, this navigation system. So we've got page one, page two, and page three here where the client can kind of flip through different pages. In, it's almost like a document, a, a nice reading experience for sure. All right, so I'm gonna jump back to editing. And just to go right to the killer feature here, it is of course document signing. So we can type slash and then do sign. And here is a signature line. And then from here, we can assign the signature to a particular person. Clicking on the box, I can assign it to myself or add a new recipient right here. We can have multiple signatures as well by just clicking on the next box over there to add an additional signee. All right, next up, let's check out the templating system because that's obviously gonna be a huge component of a tool like this. And I'm happy to report they've got a pretty wide selection of templates. A few of them even made me chuckle. So I'm gonna go over here to templates. Now, of course, I could grab a new template by just hitting new page and then load from template. It's actually gonna take me to the exact same screen. So the one that made me chuckle was actually they have a service agreement here for a babysitter. I thought, okay, we're really, we are doing signatures for babysitters at this point. Like, all right, here's what you're gonna do. I, I mean, I guess, you know, ad adults do babysitting, but to me, it's something, it's a kid's job. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of different options. You can see they're sorted by category here. So if you're doing creative contracts, they're actually like, you know, uh, live performance type of contracts or loan agreements, employment agreements, including internships. There's some sales contracts. So just a really wide selection of different templates here. And what happens when you want to use these, let's say I'm going to grab, I don't know, how about this one here, product supply a template. So I can click on it to preview what it's going to look like. And then I just select it. If this looks good to me, I just select it and it drops it in as a new page in my space. And of course I can edit everything using their editor. Editor is really great, by the way, very fast and simple to use. There's gonna be some inline editing so I can select stuff. We get this kind of inline editor so you know, I can bold certain words if I wanted. And then of course you can add more content wherever you like. So I'm inside of a bulleted list here, which is gonna keep me regulated to just more bulleted list items. So I can do like my item right here. And then if I later wanted to add some additional content, um, I can scroll maybe to the end of this list. We'll go all the way out and I could add something like an image. We'll just drop in a logo here from Apple. And then I've got the little handlebars to resize it. And I can move this around now because this is a list. It's one item. So I can't actually drop it inside of the list, but I could move it up to the top if I wanted. So you can see here, these are handlebars and I can just grab it and move the entire list around my document. So very, very smooth user interface here. When you're done creating your document, you can go ahead and share it with your client or whoever the recipient is. There is a publish button up here as well as a share button. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish this for the first time. So it's going from draft to public mode. You can see I have a URL up here. If you get the right AppSumo plan, you can replace the URL right here with your own domain name. So it could be you know docs.yourdomain.com or something like that. Uh, I'm very tempted to actually use that for our documents. I really like this system. 
I think everything about it just kind of makes sense to people right away. As soon as they get over that spaces concept, that was confusing to me at first, but then once you get it, it's like, okay, this is great. There is a share button over here, by the way, and this is where you add recipients for the page itself. So if I wanted someone to be able to access this and sign it, I would add them as a recipient right here. It says personal link. I would click add recipient and then fill out their first and last name, then add the recipient. And now they have a personal link I can share with them. There's one more important feature that's available if you get AppSumo tier three or above. And if I click on the triple dots here, I can enable chat. That is that important feature. We can turn this on and now I can allow communication with clients directly via Notch chat. So that is good to go. It actually adds a little icon up here. If I click on this, I can go ahead and engage in the chat. The chat is pretty basic. There's nothing really amazing about it, but you can add files right here, which is pretty nice. It actually goes into your content library, which is a great bridge to talk about the content library. Now, throughout this video, we've been living inside of this private list. And inside of that, we've been living inside of my space. And then there's multiple pages inside of the space. But there's another feature special to Notch called the content library. And anytime you add any assets to Notch, they're going to be sorted into your content library here. You can sort them basically just by searching or using the different image types that are supported. It does limit you to 100 megabytes, by the way, but that's nothing to sneeze at. That's a decent size file. So this isn't going to replace Google Drive, but it might replace Google Docs. So if I just start dumping content into my library, then the next time I'm creating a document, let's say we create a new space here. I'll do start from blank and I want to upload an image. I can simply just open up my content library and all of my images will be here. I'll just click it, add selected, and there we go. And of course, as we saw a moment ago inside of chat, it's very easy to share a file with a client by just simply loading up your content library. I'm going to share these tacos and there you go. Now the client can receive the tacos and actually click in and download them. They have a little download button right here. Oh, I didn't mention, but there's like tap back emojis as well. So you want to give it a thumbs up. You can do that. Now, every space has its own analytics and they're available right here under activity inside of activity. You can see exactly how many times someone has logged in, viewed a document, made a comment, completed a task. We can see the overall comment section here, which is basically just our chat. And of course, there are links to either reply or go right to that specific engagement. So I want to find out what this is. I'll click that box, it opens up the chat right to that message. These analytics, by the way, are stuck on tier two. You don't get them if you buy AppSumo tier one. So uh, as we're going to talk about momentarily, I think most people should start at a minimum of tier two. I really could probably dedicate two or three hours just to the library here, but obviously there's not time for that. So instead, I just want to point out the different types of elements or cards that are available. So there's the typical text cards here, like bullet list and headings quotes and at mentions, but there's also all of these different options available for proposals like welcome elements, summaries, value propositions. So these are not templates, but they're just very simple elements that we can click like value proposition. I'll add this in and then I've got this little layout that I can use to, you know, document my value proposition. After I get everything set the way I want, I can save this as a template and then be able to pump out proposals very, very quickly. This is far more customizable than the tool I'm currently using, which is Newsy. So in addition to these proposal elements, there's also progress elements like timelines and tasks for making sure that you're getting stuff done on time. There are offer elements for, you know, documenting basically like creating an invoice. So here's our offer. Here's what's included. I need you to sign. And then there's a bunch of media elements for uploading things like PDFs or videos. Remember, I do think that 100 megabyte limit still applies for videos. So don't try to abuse that, but we can have things like an upload field, ask clients to upload files. So that'd be great for onboarding. If you're doing web design, you want to have people upload their assets. You could create forms for that. Then there's a few layout options for things like accordions and tables. And of course we can do embeds as well. There is support for generic embeds, but there's dedicated embeds for things like YouTube, Loom, Calendly, Typeform and Canva. All right, let's head over to the settings. So I'm right up here. I'm going to go down to team settings and you're going to see that I've got my general settings where I named my team 
and then I entered in our company URL. Now, during the onboarding process, which I did not record, when I entered in my URL, it actually pulled in like the full length, like the name client amp and stuck it in this little icon right here. So it was all squashed together, it looked terrible. No worries, I just went over to branding and uploaded my own. So there is an option, by the way, to set a default color for the background of your spaces. So I just set it to this kind of gray color. And then obviously you can upload an image on a case by case basis. But that's essentially all the branding section is. We can also change the look of the buttons in case you know, you're looking right up here. I've got a rectangle. Here is a pill and there's somewhere in between. This is the custom domain section. Remember, you need tier three or above to unlock this. Very simple, you just go ahead and enter in your custom domain. It pumps out some DNS entries and then you add those over at your registrar or Cloudflare, whatever you're using, and then you're good to go. You've got your custom domain set up. We can add our team members either right here or there is a dedicated link over here and then people can log in and view your shared list, create their own private list, so on and so forth. There are some dedicated integrations with HubSpot, Salesforce, or Slack. And that's about it. We've got our plans and billing over here, which obviously are just going to be links to the app CMO plans. All right, so let's go check out the plans and pricing for Notch. As I already mentioned, it's exclusive to Plus members until 930, and then the pricing is going to go up a little bit. So let's go ahead and talk about this. Tier one is $49. I don't necessarily recommend tier one for just about anyone. We do get unlimited spaces and three users, which is probably going to be, you know, more than enough for a lot of freelancers out there. But there are some other limitations, like you don't get any of those integrations like Slack, HubSpot and Salesforce. And even if you're not using any of those platforms, more importantly, you won't get any future integrations if you're not at least on tier two. And moving up to tier two also gives you those analytics, which I think are great to have. You don't want to be left in the dark. You want to find out when people are actually logging in and checking out your stuff that you work so hard to create. I do believe that tier three is going to be the sweet spot for a lot of people, but still some of you will move up to tier four. Let me show you why in a second. With tier three, we get everything I previously mentioned. By the way, all of the plans include the, the basic features. So the editor, the templates, the signatures, the link sharing, uh, content gallery, personal links, uh, the private spaces, single sign-on and PDF exports. I didn't mention, but you can export a space as a PDF. So that's really cool as well for those buyers that might not want to you know, go ahead and do anything but look at a PDF. There's definitely still some of those out there. Anyways, on to tier three. With tier three, we get everything previously mentioned, but we also get chat and white label and the users get bumped up to 25. This is gonna cover just about everybody out there. However, if you wanna go big or go home, as the old saying is, we can go to tier four, which moves everything to unlimited users, everything else mentioned. So this is kind of the you know top dog plan, 349 bucks. If you've got the AppSumo Plus, you're gonna take $34 off of that. So you know it's not really that expensive when you consider how much a typical proposal tool is. Like Proposify here, a very popular SaaS, great application. I've used it many times before. However, it's very expensive. You can see here that their basic plan limits you to two users. It would be $70 per month and you only get five documents. To get anything more than that, you'll have to move up to the team plan, which is 50 bucks a seat and you're still limited to 30 documents. So in comparison, this is practically free when we look at AppSumo's pricing for Notch. Honestly, I like Notch better than Proposify and it's way cheaper. So I'm gonna give you my final score here in a moment, but first just go ahead and click that like button and make sure you get subscribed if you haven't already. All right, so Notch, final score here. This is a great tool. I am very impressed with it. I'm gonna give it an 8.8. .8. I think anybody who's serious about creating documents online, who's frustrated with the limitless expectations of Notion and maybe just spending too much time making things look pretty in Notion, but you still want that customizability, definitely give Notch a look, especially if you're client focused. There's a lot of other good uses for Notion. So Notion addicts don't throw me under the bus. Anyway, Notch is a steal over on AppSumo. Definitely check this one out. It's going to do it for this video. If you've liked it, make sure you consider clicking on the link in the description before making a purchase at AppSumo. Go ahead and leave me any questions or comments in the comment section. Check out clientamp.com, get signed up for our free email newsletter, and I'll see you in the next review.